G'day, welcome to Project Brewpeg. My name is Damien. We're converting a sunken fishing trawler into a global expedition and research boat. If you want to know more about the boat underwater, check out our website, brewpeg.com. Today, we're building a seaworthy door, getting rid of old plywood here. We're going to make a nice aluminium door for the side of the cabin. And Jess is getting stuck into our jet boat. She's going to be sanding off the two pack paint. Alright, so I need to rip this paint off. It's been a real nightmare to try and get it off. We've tried a few different things, paint strippers in varying different forms. I did try sandblasting it, but that took forever because this paint has held on like you wouldn't believe. So what my plan is, I've got 40 grit. I'm going to rip it up with 40 grit, take the surface off, and then I'm going to put more paint stripper on, and I'm going to lay, um, what do you call it, glad wrap or like a plastic wrap over top of it to try and keep the, um, the stuff that's in the paint stripper from evaporating out basically. So few people in the comments told me to do that so get into it see if ripping the surface off helps So I've got the, it's been on here for a day, so I'll take this off, see what we're working with. Right, get rid of that. <laughs> Hardly made a dent. doesn't want to come off. Alright, so that didn't even make a dent. I think we might sand that because it's not even budging. So I need to build some alloy doors for our pentagraph hinges. So, you might have seen them floating around in other episodes. These hinges here, a wee bit hard to show with the light, but they sort of quite fancy whiz-bang hinges. And essentially what they do is they hold the door parallel to the cabin side the whole way through its opening and closing motion. So, the issue that we've had with them, we built some steel doors and the steel doors were too heavy. I threw a plywood door on just to sort of seal that hole up. Works beautifully, so we're gonna make some alloy doors which is gonna be pretty similar weight to what the plywood is. So the plan is to use this. This is my, my temporary um, blueprints that I'm gonna be building to. So we're gonna be slicing up a uh, 50 by 50 angle that goes all the way around the sides. And then we're gonna use 50 by 50 angle as cross members to stiffen the whole thing up. And then down the center here, I'm gonna put a piece of 100 mil by 10 mil flat alloy plate. Um, and these uh, sides are gonna form a stiff waterproof barrier. So I'll explain that shortly when it makes a bit more sense when we start putting it into the frame.
Okay. So um, I've cut the outside frame of the door, so the, like the four outside edges, and now I'm just making the three, I don't know what you call them, cross members or battens or something, I'm just making the three pieces of alloy that go um, every 400 mil roughly, there's a, a piece that goes across. Um, I'm doing that to stiffen the door up as much as possible, so the door's quite light. These are all um, 50 mil by 6 mil angle alloy, um, and then the door skin is a 3 mil um, alloy skin so it's it's pretty stiff on its own um, but I want to put a few of these cross members in just to stiffen it right up you're dogging it and you're putting four dogs on so it's got to be able to yeah. be stiff enough for that right yeah I want to be able to pull it quite tight without basically bending or warping the alloy so that's why I'm putting so many um, cross members in as possible and not like kink it or anything because if you kink it that happens that's where the wire has to run down it actually is. Show the camera. Yeah. So I need to change my machine, my, my welder, over from a steel welder to an alloy welder. To do that, there's a couple of things you've got to change. So in my particular machine, I've got to change some rollers, I have to change the gas, and I need to change the liner in my gun. Um, so the liner is basically, if you don't know welders, the liner is basically what allows the MIG wire to travel from the machine all the way down to the gun that you're pressing the trigger on to weld. Now, one thing, this is a relatively new one, but I'm swapping the machine over to alloy, so you can't use this. You have to use one that's completely completely brand new, doesn't have any steel dust or anything like that um, going on because the alloy is, is really susceptible to any sort of imperfections or impurities in the actual metal itself. Um, if anybody has ever walked around a welder, welders get a bit paranoid about people kinking up their welding cable. That there is a cable that's being kinked. So this is a, a liner, this is, this is what they're worried about is basically that happening because the wire has to feed down here and then go through the kink and head off to the gun. If you have, you know, that one is I obviously didn't, you know, it was doing it, but I obviously didn't notice it too much. But if, if that starts to get, you know, more than that, or you end up with a couple of them, you're going to have a lot of problems with your welder. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of thing that you're looking out for, is kinks in the liner, which sits inside the gun. Amazing though. Yeah, good. I don't know that you're 
big shark though. Yeah, God, that's beautiful. Well done. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it's beautiful. Comes up really nice with the yeah. sanding mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. Nice and grippy. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for the whole thing is to have three feet anywhere and it's great. I don't want to do a shit job. No. It probably doesn't make sense to take it all off, but... Well, no, because it was all falling apart. It would have looked ratchet. I, was gonna, I, I can't envision how big the engine is, so I can't... Is it yeah, the physical motor is... Sitting up out? The physical motor is about that big. They're, they're tiny. So I'm, I'm, my goal is to hopefully mount it as low as I can. But how do you steer it? Oh, oh, well, like a so motorbike. So someone has to sit on it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Couldn't you just get one of those normal... Marine salts in the yeah. Sphere, the yeah, yeah, you can. Why don't you just stop? Just stop for the minute. So you're just cutting out everything today, and then we're going to weld tomorrow. Is that correct? I'm going to have a little bit of a go at just tacking it today. If you haven't welded alloy, um, which I haven't, bugger, well, bugger all, you have to clean where you're going to weld. So in this case I'm going to weld across here and down there. You have to basically clean it really well. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. So people use um, like a stainless steel wire wheel on their grinder and they can sort of buff it all and then get in there and get a nice beautiful weld. The whole, the reason you're doing this is you're trying to remove the oxide layer that, so aluminium, the reason why aluminium doesn't corrode out in the atmosphere like this is because it forms what's called aluminium oxide. The surface oxidizes with the oxygen in the atmosphere, aluminium oxide forms, and that basically protects it. But to weld it, you've got to take that off. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. Stainless steel wire buff wheel is one option. Um, another option that I'm using is um, basically battery acid. It's uh, what has it got? It's 30% sulfuric acid and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm sure isn't real good for you. Um, it's got about eight pages of safety data sheets that come with this thing because it's so um, apparently scary. I suspect it probably is pretty full on. Um, one of the reasons why I'm using this rather than the buff wheel is when you use the buff wheel, you take off the oxide layer with the wheel and then it spins around and does a 360 and it puts the oxide layer straight back on. That's what I've been told. Whether or not that's actually what happens in, in practice, I don't know. Um, but that's what I've been told, so I'm going to try this idea. Um, if it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm just going to go back to using the buff wheel like everybody else does. Um, so, let's get into it. So I'll let that sit for a bit. Apparently it needs to sit for like five minutes, something like that, um, and then wash it all off with water. So I'll give that a bit of time, go have some food, and then we'll come back and we'll wash it off and see what that stuff's actually done. So um, the instructions on the back of this say to do a 50-50 mix with water. Um, I've done that. I reckon it did a thing. So it looks ex basically exactly the same to me. I can't see that it's done any cleaning or anything. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try a straight mix on some of the older stuff I've got to see if it makes any difference because um, apparently this stuff is the business but I'm not really seeing anything at the stage so um, yeah we'll give it another shot and, and if all else fails I'm gonna just abandon this and I'll go straight to using the stainless steel buff wheel hey that looks to be doing something So it's turning white. I guess that's a good thing. Watered down, this stuff is garbage. Doesn't do a thing. However, if you put it on straight, give it sort of three, four, five minutes or whatever, and then hose it off, it comes up really good. Um, trying to. That's basically brand new alloy, and that was old, gross, corroded alloy. They're very, very similar. Um, it brings it back to being pretty much pristine. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna call that a win. Now I'm gonna basically tack the outside frame of the door together. Um, 
Again, first time I've ever really done any serious amount of alloy welding. I've done a few tacks and whatever, but nothing serious, so let's get into it. This is what I managed to pull off. So it's a bunch of tacks basically, but in a row. And I will flapper this down flat, but I've put it up quite hot so that I can sort of melt into the alloy. And I'm going to, hopefully that's tacked up enough. I'll flip it over and see what sort of penetration I got. Probably bugger all, but um, for a first weld, I don't know, let's just see. This is my process of learning, by the way, is I just... I don't really do anything, I just jump straight into it and blast away and then figure out what I've done wrong afterwards. It's got about halfway down into the metal. Let's throw another bit on. Basically trying to make the outside square. looking better so that is my second proper alloy weld that I've ever done so it's still not perfect but MIG welder second weld I reckon we're getting close the um, MIG gun out as much as possible. See if that makes a difference. Nah, that didn't do a thing. If anything, it was even worse. All right, something's happening back at the rollers. I need to check that out. So this is my roller for my welder. So there's two of these and they sit either one sits on top of the other and they basically squash the wire um, in this groove here and then feed it down the gun. This is a 1.2 millimeter groove here and this is a 0.9 millimeter groove here. I use 1.2 millimeter wire when I'm doing alloy. Um, this is a specific roller for alloy. It's a U-shaped groove rather than a V-shaped groove. You have V for steel and U for alloy. Yeah, so I don't know why it's doing that. It's basically chewing up the liner. Not sure what's going on there. I've never seen it do that on this machine before. But um, yeah, we'll have to figure out how to resolve that. So this is the inside of my welder. And normally, these rollers sit in like that. They squash down the wire. Let me put the wire in. So it's just a piece of wire. It feeds in from the roll here. Feeds in through this thing here. Comes through that feeder and into this little part here which then goes off to the gun so I push the trigger and basically it's the other end of this pipe here and the two, this is some spare rollers but you can see there's two grooves and this wire here is supposed to sit in one of those grooves and there's little spacer rings and that helps you move it either in or out depending on which ring and which, sorry, which thickness wire and which groove you want to use however I've just, I just couldn't work out why this thing was chewing up wire and doing funny things and it only seems to show up on aluminium because the wire is soft enough to show the problem. But it doesn't line up and I've found a design flaw. So let me strip it down and I'll show you what I mean. So you take these out. This, the teeth in here, the bottom of these teeth go down below the surface of this steel. So you can, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's basically that tooth I'll be able to see it that way. You see it sort of chewed out a wee bit. And then also this one here, you see it's been chewing out all the way around. This here is sticking out too far. And it's not one, so these two here, you can swap back and forth quite easily with these little screws. This is a, a star head, so it's clearly not designed to be pulled apart very often. But 
the re but the flaw in the whole system is that this these gears are sticking out too far and they're chewing into these which means you can't then select perfectly the roller the, the groove that the roller is supposed to the wire is supposed to sit on so what I need to do is take this off figure out some way of machining those teeth back maybe three mil something like that just enough to clear that's the steel edge here because that steel edge is basically killing these teeth and stopping these from lining up Surely not. My guess is that spacer is basically holding it out too far. My guess is if I take that out, I bet it's going to work perfect. I'm just going to try this crazy theory. Pull that guy in. Oh, you beauty. You absolute beauty. Alright, I think we've solved our problem. Let's throw this in, test our alignment. Oh, that is just absolutely perfect. That couldn't have been better. Yeah, all right. Now, if we squash that guy down on there, that one doesn't line up. So, let's work on you now. Space her off. Get her out. Space her out. Check you now. <laughs> that is absolutely perfect. That's what we're after. So let's throw these guys back on. This is what it's like building a boat. A third of your time is spent fixing your gear. And if you're on YouTube, the other another third is spent mucking around with cameras. <laughs> and then the last third, if you've got any time left in the day, is spent building a boat. We've had a win. We've had wind, but we've also had a win. That was so much simpler than I thought it was going to be. Alright. Clean you back off. Slide you back in. Oh, that is a thing of beauty. I love it when things work out properly. this time. Oh, beautiful. Stoked with that. Don't like the sound of that. Doing funny things again. That wasn't great either. We will figure this out. So, bump the wire speed right up, see if that makes a difference. Don't know if it's me or the welder.
So it's been a bit of a cold spell in um, Bundaberg, but actually around the country and in New Zealand as well apparently. Um, it's been unusually chilly so we've had the woolies out and the boots <laughs> to stay warm so we can keep going early morning. First thing in the morning we have to go down and touch cold steel to build doors so <laughs> just trying to build up the motivation to get out there and do it. <laughs> yeah, br breakfast kind of dragged out a bit. <laughs> frame is now put together. The frame on the actual cabin itself is not square, this door is square um, and I knew that that was going to be the case and I've done a, a bit of a trick to try and get around that. So I've built this door purposely slightly too big and what I'm going to do, I've got, the reason I've built the door this way around so you've got the, the thick stiffener part, vertical stiffener part on the inside of the door and then you've got this flat um, area here. This allows me a bit of room to trim so I'm going to probably knock off three or four mil all the way around and I'm going to do it to suit the door frame so it won't be square, the door will end up not being square on the outside but the inside's going to be perfectly square so that's what I want because it makes everything going forward easier so putting all my bracing in, all my insulation, everything you know if this part of it is square life becomes easy so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm just going to go around with my um, bench saw here um, I'm just setting it up, I'm dropping it into the table, into my workbench so that I can um, slide this whole door around on my workbench and it's not going to fall over the edge or anything weird um, and then I'll just nip off all the way around all four edges. Alright, that's our plan. What's going on over here? <laughs> Morning. Hello. Um, what are you up to? Yep, sanding. So this is how it's coming up. It's coming up really nice. Yeah, you nice. see I've done that bit over there. Oh yeah, it's coming up beautiful, isn't it? This, yeah. It's quite nice because I can just let my arms kind of the, the weight of the machine kind of do it because I'm kind of downhill yeah. and I'm, I'm sitting so I can kind of last a while. Yeah, cool. Which is quite nice. It's nice to be doing a, a physical job for a bit. Yeah. Um, so where the glue was, it's quite thick so I'm using a 40 grit on that. Yeah. To kind of try and dig into that and I'm sort of chipping away what I can. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, but some of it's come away quite nice. So the, um, the paint strip has, you know, took a bit off, so it's made it a bit easier. Yeah, but go. I've got a bit to go, um, and right underneath you is the really hard bit. It just seems to, I don't know what happened, but that, that bit there is just determined to stay on. Over so. on this side, just down in here. Yeah, the paint. Just down in this area here. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't want to come off. So it's going to be a, a horrible job, but we'll get to it. So, yeah. So I'm not doing this bit here because we're cutting this off, right? Yeah, that'll go. Because um, we're putting the pontoons on, so yeah. that'll come off, so I'm not bothering with that. But yeah, everything else. Cool. around the corners off but that fits perfectly in that frame cool so now I just need to build the bracing and everything to hold the actual door on the hinge so after much mucking around I figured out what's going on with the welder it was the um, it was these little tips so it has an M8 tip um, and they're 1.2 millimeter tips the wires 1.2 and it was just it was literally too tight and it was 
the, if there was any grit or any rubbish coming down the liner from the rollers, the rollers are sort of chaffing up the wire a wee bit, and it is sending stuff down the liner, and I can't seem to stop that. So um, what was happening is basically it was binding up in here and just jamming up in the tip. Um, so I got a drill bit and just ran a drill bit down there just slightly bigger. So it's 1.2 originally and I've got it at 1.4. Um, so it's not ideal, but it seems to be working great now. There's no, like it doesn't jam up, the wire doesn't stop and then screw the weld up. So hopefully I'll get better results now. My mate Malcolm, the alloy boat builder uh, that's building the tri hull over the over the paddock from us, he came over and um, showed us some tricks to do with in terms of getting really good welds on alloy. So I'm going to tack this together so it's sort of not going to move and it's solid, and then I'm going to show you this cool ass trick. I didn't have the camera on it, but it basically coiled up a big bird's nest up in here. So pushing aluminium wire down a three meter long tube, it, it obviously with a bit of resistance, it bundled it, you know, bent the wire and just bundled it up. That's always gonna be a risk with this particular type of welder. You can kind of think of it like trying to push a rope forward. Um, it's a, just a really difficult task on the best of days. Um, the common solution is to use a small gun, which is basically, you don't have any wire coming from the machine. It's all up at the gun end and you have a little one kg um, or half kg reel of wire that basically spools out and only has to travel about probably 10, 12 inches before it's, um, you know, it's at the, the, the MIG head. Um, my, my welder is too old. I physically can't get a spool gun onto this. Um, so if you're thinking, you know, why don't you just buy a spool gun? I'd love to, but I can't. The welder isn't capable of running it. It doesn't have the controls to be able to run it. So, um, yeah, I've investigated that quite a bit with this particular model, but yeah, they don't really do it as an option. So yeah, I have to try and figure out a way of making it work this way. So I've rebuilt the various parts on it, um, buffed out all of the gunk from the wire wheel, like the, the little rollers, um, cleaned out the tip, cleaned the liner out, sort of done everything I can think of to get it to work. Straightened the run out, uh, moved the welder and straightened that out even more, and that seems to have made a bit of a difference. Yeah, we're running pretty good at this end so far. So, let's give it another shot. Really doesn't like it when the, um, the run is bent, even slightly. Uh, all right, I'll move the welder again. Take it off a meter or so. All right, so I've had lunch, I'm fueled up, ready to go. Right, the trick, as promised. So, the beauty with aluminium is that it's really soft, so it gives you lots of options when you're trying to cut it. You don't have to use a grinder, like on steel, you'd be using a grinder with a cutoff disc. We can use wood saws um, to rip through it because it is so soft. Now, you do need to put a wax on the blade, um, otherwise the aluminium starts to melt and really, you know, go onto the tungsten tips and really start to gark up the metal and things like that. Put a bit of the wax on, cuts absolutely beautifully. Um, I don't know what the stuff's called, I haven't actually got any. I've just been using a cutting fluid because it's Sunday, so I can't get any today. Um, However, the trick I want to show you is when we're welding, we've got, actually, I'll grab the camera and I'll show you. So you can sort of see along here, we've got, that's basically flush. And we can't put a decent weld into there because that, that's cut, you know, close, it it's fits really well, but essentially any weld is just going to be up on top. Same deal with basically all of these other um, angles and, and various things that we have to weld. So what we do, take your saw blade, if I spin that back, you can have a look along there, you see the blade is only just hanging out the bottom of that um, plate. This is six millimeter steel. So what we're gonna be doing, I've got this blade here hanging down three millimeters and I slice along where that, um, where that join is on, on all of these various things that I have to weld. And what that does is you can see in here, maybe you, maybe you can't, it's a wee bit hard to see, but the weld that was on, on the underside has gone through roughly half, but if I try and weld this, there's going to be, not only is there going to be rubbish and impurities and stuff in that gap there, but I'm also not going to be able to get very much penetration in there. So by slicing along there with my 3mm um, saw blade drop down, I'm going to get a, a nice 
um, gap that I can then fill back up with weld and I know I'm going to get a great um, a great weld on both sides so I'm going to do that for all of these various things that we've welded up. Done. So what you're left with at the end is a nice slot that you can basically fill up with weld. So they're probably slightly deeper than I would have liked to make them, but that's really not an issue. You can just start piling in some metal and fill those back up. But we're gonna get a really nice strong weld and then we can just flapper them off knowing that we've got quite a lot of metal still inside that weld. I need the surface flat, um, so that's why I'm digging down and cutting into these slots like this. Welding on the ground. Can't actually get the welder to behave up on the bench because it's just too sensitive to bends in the liner here so we'll straighten the liner out by going to it. That's the best weld it's done all day. Really? Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely the liner, me not knowing how to drive it. So I figured out what's going on with the welder. If there's any form of bend in that main lead going to the gun, the um, alloy is obviously providing too much resistance down the liner and it's just basically binding up. The little rollers don't have enough grunt to be able to push it through. The wire's not stiff enough to not bind up and start birds nesting. And then whatever's going on at the gun end, if there's any resistance at that end, it just, just basically doesn't feed through. So as soon as I straighten it out and keep it absolutely perfectly straight, we don't seem to have any drama with being able to get a decent weld. So uh, that's my solution for now is to just keep that welder in sort of as straight as possible and then go through and make sure we've um, notched out all of our welds, so that, all of our um, joins so that we can get a good weld bead right down into that steel. It's doing okay now that I've straightened everything out. So I've got some reasonable sort of welds on it. Um, I don't know if I'll probably don't want to show them too close because there's plenty of aluminium welders that watch this channel and yeah, I, I'm just going to back off slightly. They'll do. They will definitely hold. There's enough bracing in this to make it nice and stiff. Now I'm going to add in, um, over the back here, I've got a piece of 100mm uh, by 10mm thick alloy plate. So I'm going to weld it um, right down the centre line between these two here. And that's going to form the basis for my pentagraph hinge to bolt onto this door. So down the centre here I have to put a piece of aluminium basically in that orientation there so that my pentagraph hinge, is a spare hinge mount, it basically bolts on like that and I'll drill four holes and then this can slide up and down through those slots. But that, that there has to sit in that orientation. Now I also need to factor in orientation and depth and everything of the doorway that way. So what I'm going to do is actually sink this down to be flush. So I'm going to weld it on the top of that rail just there but this one here I have to sink it down and cut that out so the way that I'm going to do that is back, back to the table saw you can sort of see I've basically put the put the teeth exactly at the um, or just slightly above the height of that piece of 10mm alloy and I'm just gonna rock this back and forth over top of it and chop that out So that's what I'm left with, basically looks like I've gone through and chewed it out with some teeth. But that there should fit. Oh, she spin it, spin it that way. Right, so that is how it's all gonna sit. So it's 
looking that way it should be pretty flush um, and then it's going to be flush down at that end there as well so let's figure out where we're going to put these holes we'll drill those out so that we don't have to try and do it um, once we've got this all welded in for everybody that's been telling me to get a drill press <laughs> we've got a drill press she's a beast of a thing it was um built by an engineer built by an engineer at home so it's all like really heavy steel just welded together and so on but it is so solid it's an awesome machine I paid 50 bucks for it. So the plate's prepped. So I've cleaned up the edges. I've basically flapped them up, made them nice and sort of lovely and not going to cut yourself or anything like that. I've flapped this edge down onto a 45. Not sure if you can see it in the light, but basically when that goes up flush against the piece of alloy next to it, I can get a bit of a bead sort of sinking down in there. A bit like what we did with the saw, but just in this case I've veed it off. Now this other side is going to be uh, welded across the back edge over here. So this is what I was able to get done. So the welder Look, you can definitely get better welds than that. I'm not too stressed about that though. Um, this is just a door frame. It's going to be super strong by the time I'm finished. But what we're going to go through now, we're just about ready to start bolting this up. So we're going to go through and flapper off all of the, the high bits and so on of the weld. Um, and then we'll go in and just sort of tidy up the edges and stuff like that. So the weld there can get um, dropped back down to flush and so on. On the underside, this is sort of, that's basically what I was able to get done in the end. So. Uh, this is the face that I need flat because we're gluing a three mil skin to this so I need to basically go through and rip off all of these welds that you can sort of see that are sticking up high make sure they're all below the surface and then we're ready to start fitting this into the door frame This is a visible face, so I want that brush look, so I'm basically using a 240 grip, just sanding with the grain. So that's what the brush look kind of comes up with. You saw how fast that was to achieve, it's really, really simple. A few, you can sort of see there's a few scratches just up in here, that was me mucking around with the chisel just earlier. If I really wanted to go nuts, I'd probably just keep going. You can sort of see there's some scratches there that's me with the flap wheel so it doesn't take a lot to actually get this garked up but at the same time it doesn't take a lot to get it really beautiful so um yeah for visible alloy i like to just give it a, a quick sand like that so now that we've gone around and cleaned up all of the welds all the corners that sort of thing there's no no sharp edges on it anywhere um, i'm going to go through and clean all of the cutting oil so um this stuff here is uh, basically just a cutting oil it makes um, any sort of machine work, whether it's you know cutting it with a saw or with the drill, or whatever, it just makes it you know significantly better when you're trying to um, cut through a soft material like alloy. So what I'm going to do now is go through and clean all of that up, um, give it a give it a wash and get all the grease and grime and rubbish off it, and then take it up inside and see if we can fit it to our pentagraph hinge. Going. Just realised I welded it the wrong side. What do you mean? <laughs> this here has to be offset and I welded it the wrong way around. It needed to be offset that way, not that way. But there's your door. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Some of the welds are a bit sort of agricultural. That's alright. Yeah, they'll do. They're yeah, not as long as they hold. They're not coming loose. And you won't see them. There's a little insulation on the hopper. Yeah. That's the only bit you see. Cool, babe. It's really yeah. neat. Rough. 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 Oh, roll. Rough. I know, it's full on. Oh, roll, roll. Oh. Oh my god, you're too cute, baby. There you have it. So we managed to get the frame put together. 
um, I realised that I put the plate that uh, the pentagraph hinge bolts onto, I, I offset it, it has to be offset 10mm and I offset it the wrong way so I had to cut it off in the end and move it over 10mm, or 20mm actually to get it all lined up. Um, so that's uh, done now, so the frame's done, the plate is welded on there. Um, next week we're getting stuck into twisting the door so we have to put quite a bit of twist and also bend into the door um, and that was way harder than we thought uh, but we figured out a way to get a hell of a lot of bend in that door um, that was pretty interesting. Um, dogs as well, next week we're working on the stainless dogs that are going to be latching this door uh, really tight up against the rubber seal so you will get stuck into that as well and show you how we're going to build those and finally we need to get into this welder there's clearly something more going on um, I don't know if it's going to be fatal uh, but yeah, we'll get stuck in, see what we can do. I'll just sort of sneak preview. We've ripped it to pieces and we're doing some pretty intense testing to figure out what's going. So, um, yeah, I'll update you on that and see how we got on with putting a spool gun onto that machine. After building the door frame, Dame flew to Brisbane for some meetings for work. It wasn't long before Dame was heading back to Brewpeg.